Welcome back to blah, 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 blah. welcome back to Vans <laughs> Reading. Sorry about that. So we're on chapter four of the international bestseller, uh, bestseller Thinking Fast and Slow. Sorry, I've been busy with my new apartment, which has been taking so much time in my life. Anyway, so here we go. For chapter four: the associative machine. Do you say associative? I think it's associative or associative machine. Associated. Let's say associated. Whatever, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. To begin your exploration of the surprising workings of System 1, look at the following words, bananas vomit. A lot happened to you during the last second or two. You experienced some unpleasant images and memories. Your face twisted slightly in expression of disgust, and you may have <clears throat> pushed this book imperceptibly farther away. Your heart rate has increased, the hair on your arms rose a little, and your sweat glands were activated. In short, you responded to the disgusting word with an attunated version of how you would react to the actual event. All of this was completely automatic beyond your control. There was no particular reason to do so, but your mind automatically assumed a temporal sequence and a casual connection between the words bananas and vomit, forming a sketchy scenario in which bananas caused the sick the caused the sickness. As a result, you're expecting a temporary aversion, aversion, aversion to bananas, don't worry, it'll pass. The state of your memory has changed in other ways. You're now usually ready to recognize and respond to objects and concepts associated with vomit, such as sick, stink, or nausea, and vomits associated with bananas, such as yellow and fruit. <coughs> uh, and perhaps apple and berries. Vomiting normally occurs in specific contexts, such as hangovers and indigestion. You would also be usually ready to recognize word associated with other causes of the same unfortunate outcome. Furthermore, your system one notes the fact that the ju well, juxta oh, juxt juxtaposition, juxtaposition of two words is uncommon. You probably never encountered it before. You experienced mild surprise. The complex constellation of re respond. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with me today? This complex constellation of responses occurred quickly automatically and effortlessly you did not will you did not will it and you could not stop it it was an operation of system one the events that took place as a result of your seeing the words happened by a process called associative activation ideas that have been invoked trigger many other ideas in the spreading cascade of activity in your brain the essential future of this complex set of mental events in oh shit sorry the essential future of this complex set of mental events is it is its co coherence. Each element is connected and each supports and strengthens the others. The words evoke memories which evoke emotions which in turn evoke facial expressions and other reactions such as general tensing up and avoidance tendency. The facial expression and the avoidance motion intensifies the feelings to which they are linked and the feelings in turn reinforce compatible ideas. All this happens quickly and all at once yielding a self-reinforcing pattern of cognitive, emotional and physical responses that is both diverse and integrated. It has been called associatively coherent. Coherent, uh, that's the word. In a second or so, you accomplished a, automatically an unconsciously remarkable feat. Starting from a completely unexpected event, your system one made as much sense as possible of the situation. Two simple words are the Juxtaposed, juxtaposed, juxtaposed. That's an interesting word. Let's see what we got here. Juxtaposed, 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 juxtaposed. Juxtapose. Yeah, juxtapose. Weird word. By linking the words in a causal story, it evaluated the possible threat, mild to moderate, and created a context for future developments by pre preparing you for the events that had just become more likely. It also created a context for the current event by evaluating how surprising it was. You ended up as informed about the past and prepared for the future as you could be. An odd future of what happened is that your system one treated the mere conjunction of two words as a representation of reality. Your body reacted in an attempt well, your body reacted in an attenuated replica of a reaction to a real thing and the emotional response and physical recoil were part of the interpretation of the event. As cognitive scientists have emphasized in recent years, cognition is embodied. You think with your body, not only with your brain. The mechanism that causes these mental events has been known for a long time. It is the association of ideas. We are we all understand from experience that ideas follow each other in our conscious minds in a fairly orderly way. 
British philosophers of the 7th and 18th century search for rules that explain such sequences. In an inquiry concerning human understanding published in 1748, the Scottish philosopher David Hume reduced the principles of association to three, to three resemblance, con contiguity in time and place, and causality. Our concepts of associations has changed radically since Hume's day, but his three principles still provide a good start. I will adopt an expensive view of what an idea is. It can be concrete or abstract, and it can be expressed in many ways, as a verb, as a noun, as an adjective, or as a claims to first. Psychologists think of ideas as nodes in a vast network called associative memory, in which each idea is linked to many others. There are different types of links, causes or linked to their uh, causes. Sorry, uh, a vast network called associative memory, in which each idea is linked to many others. There are different types of links, causes or linked to their effects. Virus called things to their properties, lime, green, things to the... <clears throat> The categories to which they belong, banana fruit. One, one way we have advanced beyond Hume is that we no longer think of the mind as going through a sequence of conscious ideas one at a time. In the current view of how associative memory works, a great deal happens at once. And a, an idea that has been activated does not merely evoke one other idea, it activates many ideas, which in turn activates others. Furthermore, only a few of the activated ideas will register in consciousness. Most of the work of associative thinking is silent hidden from our conscious selves. The notion that we have limited access to the workings of our minds is difficult to accept because naturally it is alien to our experience, but it's true, you know far less about yourself than you feel than you feel you do. Oh, you know far, okay, yeah, that's true. The marvels of priming. As in common in science, the first big breakthrough in our understanding of mechanism of association was an improvement in the method of measurement. Until a few decades ago, the only way to study the associations was to ask many people questions such as what is the first word that comes to your mind when you hear the word day? I think sun. The researchers tailed the frequency of responses such as night, sunny or long. In the 1980s, psychologists discovered that exposure to a word causes immediate and measurable changes in the ease with which may related words can be evoked. If you have recently seen or heard the word eat, you are temporarily more likely to complete the word fragment, soup as soup, then as soap. The opposite would happen, of course, if you had seen wash, we call this priming effect and say that the idea of eat primes, the idea of soup, and that wash primes soap. Huh, that is actually kind of true. I do kind of think like every time I think I gotta wash myself, soap comes in mind, the shampoo comes in mind, water comes in mind. So. That's a really cool idea to learn languages that way, if you think about it. Instead of, you know, find just learning words one by one, you need to find associative words to combine them, which kind of makes sense. Let me go in the middle here. So you can... I mean, that is pretty interesting. <sighs> uh, priming effects take many forms. If the idea of eat is currently on your mind, whether or not you're conscious of it, you'll be quicker than usual to recognize the word soup when it is spoken in, in a whisper or presented in a blurry font. And of course, you're primed not only for the idea of soup, but also for a multitude of food-related ideas, including fork, hungry, fat, diet, and cookie. <laughs> yeah, fat. If for your most recent meal you sat as at a wobbly restaurant table, you will be primed for wobbly as well. Furthermore, the primed ideas have some ability to prime other ideas. Although more weakly, like ripples on a pond, activation spreads through a small part of the vast network of associated ideas. The mapping of these ripples is now one of the most exciting pursuits in psychological research. Huh, that is actually kind of true. Another major advance in our understanding of memory was discovery that prime, priming is not restricted to concept and words. You cannot know this form of conscious experience. Of course, but you must accept the alien idea that your actions and your emotions can be primed by events of which you are not even aware. In an experiment that became an instant classic, psychologist John Bach and his collaborators are students at New York, at New York uh, University. Most aged 18 to 22 assemble four word sentences from a set of five words. For example, finds he yelp, find what the, for example, finds he, he it yellow instantly. Whoa. Okay. Am I reading that? Yeah, finds he it yellow instantly. For one group of students, half the scrambled sentences contain words associated with the elderly, such as 
Florida forgetful, bold, gray, or wrinkled. When they had completed that task, the young participants were sent out to do another experiment in an office down the hall. That short walk was the experiment was was what the experiment was about. The researchers unobtrusively measured the time it took people to get from one end of the corner, corridor to the other. As Bach had predicted, the young people who had fashioned a sentence from words with an elderly theme walked down the hallway significantly more slowly than the others. The Florida effect involves two stages of priming. First, the set word primes thoughts of the Florida effect involves two stages of priming. First, the set of word primes thought of old age through the world. Oh God, look at me, I'm a dummy. The Florida effect involves two stages of priming. First, the set of words primes thoughts of old age, though the word old is never mentioned. Second, these thoughts prime a behavior walking slowly, which is associated with old age. All, all this happens without any awareness when they were questioned afterward. None of the students reported noticing that the words had, had a common theme and they all insisted that nothing they did after the first experiment could have been influenced by the words they had encountered. The idea of old age had not come to their conscious awareness, but their actions had changed nevertheless. This remarkable priming phenomenon, the influencing of an action by the idea, or is known as the ideomotor effect, or the ideomotor effect. That's, that's how I'm guessing I said. Although you surely were not aware of it, reading this paragraph primed you as well. If you had needed to stand up to get a glass of water, you would have been slightly slower than usual to rise from your in the what uh, from your chair unless you happen to dislike the elderly in which case research suggests that you might have been slightly faster than usual the idea motor the idea motor link also works in reverse a study conducted in a german university was the mirror image of an early experiment that bach and his colleagues had carried out in new york students were asked to walk around a room for five minutes at a rate of 30 steps per minute which was about one third their normal pace. After this brief experience, the, par the participants were much quicker to recognize words related to old age, such as forgetful, old, and lonely. Reciprocal priming effects tend to produce a coherent reaction. If you were primed to think of old age, you would tend to act old, and acting old would reinforce the thought of old age. Reciprocal links are common in the associative network. For example, being amused tends to make you smile, and smiling tends to make you feel amused. Go ahead and take a pencil and hold it between your teeth. For a few seconds with the eraser pointing to you to your to your right and then pointed to your left now hold the pencil so the point is aimed straight in front of you by pursuing your, by pursing your lips around the razor and you were probably one way that one of these actions forced you to face into a frown and the other into a smile what the hell i don't have a pencil so i'm guessing that her go like this. All right, so, uh, so this is here. Da, 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 da. Hold on, let me find. For example, being used to do this. So go ahead and take a pencil, hold it between your teeth, okay? For a second, with your razor pointing to your right, okay? And then point it to your roof. Okay. And then we're in front of you. That was gay. That was, sorry, that was fucking hilarious. Um, by pursing these actions, force your face into a frown and the other into a smile. College students were asked to rate the humor of the cartoons from Gary Larson's The Far Side while holding a pencil in their mouth. Those who were smiling without any awareness. I'm doing so found the cartoons funnier than then did who, those who were frowning in another experiment people whose face was shaped into a frown by squeezing their eyebrows together reported enhanced emotional response to upsetting pictures starving children people arguing maimed accident victims simple common gestures can also unconsciously influence other thoughts and feelings Wow, that's trippy. So you can literally manipulate everyone with this. I mean, pr practically you put an idea in front of their head, they're gonna maybe get influenced. Simple common gestures can also unconsciously 
influence our thoughts and feelings. In one demonstration, people were asked to listen to messages through new headphones. They were told that the purpose of the experiment was to test the quality of the audio equipment and were instructed to move their heads repeatedly to check for, for any distortions of sound. Half the, half the participants were told to nod their head up and down while others were told to shake it side to side. The messages they heard were radio editorials. Those who nodded a yes gesture tended to accept the message they heard, but those who shook their head tended to reject it. Again, there was no awareness, just a habitual connection between an attitude of rejection or acceptance and its common physical expression. You can see why the common domination admonished, well, a domination, did you hear that word? My God, I'm making up words. You can see why the common admonition, admonition, to act calm and kind regardless of how you feel is very good advice. You are likely to be rewarded by actually feeling calm and kind. Studies of priming effects have yielded, sorry, studies of priming effects have yielded discoveries that threaten our self-image as conscious and autonomous authors of our judgments and our choices. For instance, most of us think of voting as a deliberate act that reflects our values and our assessments of policies and is not influenced by irrelevancies. Our vote should not be affected by the location of the polling station, for example, but it is. A study of voting patterns uh, in precincts of Arizona in 2000 showed that the support for propositions to increase the funding of schools was significantly greater when the polling station was in a school than when it was in a nearby location. A separate experiment showed that exposing people to images of classrooms and school lockers also increased the tendency of participants to support a school initiative. The effect of images was larger than the difference between parents and other voters. The studies of priming has come some way from the initial demonstrations that reminding people of old age makes them walk more slowly. <laughs> we now know that the effects of priming can reach into every corner of our lives. Reminders of money produce some troubling effects. Participants in one experiment were shown a list of five words from which they were required to construct a four-word phase. A forward phrase that had money theme. High salary desk paying became a high salary. A higher, so, oh my God, I swear. Well, my bad. Other primes were much more subtle, including the presence of an irre irrelevant money related object in the background, such as a stack of Monopoly money on a table or a computer with a screensaver of dollar bills floating in the water. Money prime people become more independent than they would be without the associated trigger. They preserved almost twice as long in trying to solve a very difficult problem before they asked the experimenter for help. A crisp demonstration of increased self-reliance, money prime people are also more selfish. They were much less willing to spend time helping an other student who pretended to be confused about an experimental task. What an experimenter clumsily dropped a bunch of pencils on the floor. The participants with money unconsciously on their mind picked up fewer pencils. <laughs> What? In another experiment in the series, participants were told that they would shortly have a get acquainted conversation with another person and were asked to set up two chairs while the experimenter left to retrieve that person. Participants primed by money chose to stay much more farther apart than the non primed peers. 118 versus 80 centimeters. Money primed undergraduates also showed a greater preference for being alone. Hmm. The general theme of these findings is that the idea of money primes individualism. Whoa, that's hectic. A, reluct a reluctance to be involved with others, to depend on others, or to accept demands from others. The psychologist who has done this remarkable research, Kathleen Voss, has been laudably restrained in discussing the implications of her findings, leaving the task to her readers. Her experiments are profound. Her findings suggest that Living in a culture that surrounds us with reminders of money may shape our behavior and our attitudes in some way that we do not know about and of which we may not be proud. Some cultures provide frequent reminders of respect, other constantly rem remind their members of God and some societies prime obedience by large images of the dear leader. Can there be any doubt that the ubiquitous portraits of the national leader in Dick Dictator or dictatorial societies not only convey the feeling that Big Brother is watching, but also lead to an actual reduction in spontaneous thought and independent action. The evidence of priming studies suggests that the reminding of the mortality increases the appeal of thought. I, oh, listen to this. The evidence of priming studies suggests that reminding people of their mortality increases the appeal of 
authoritarian ideas, which may, re, may which may become reassuring in the context of terror of death. Other experiments have confirmed Freudian insights about the role of symbols and metaphors in unconscious associations. For example, the ambiguous word fragments w dot dot h and s dot dot h and sorry s dot dot p people who were recently asked to think of an action which they are ashamed are more likely to complete those fragments as wash and soap and less likely to see wish and soup furthermore merely thinking about stabbing co-worker <laughs> jesus furthermore merely thinking about stabbing a co-worker in the back these people more inclined to buy soap disinfectant or detergent than batteries juice or candy bars feeling that one soul is stained appears to trigger to desire to cleanse one body an impulse that has been dubbed the lady macbeth effect cool name the cleansing is highly specific to the body parts involved in a sin Participants in an experiment were reduced to a lie to an imaginary person either on the phone or email. In subsequent tests of the desirability of various products, people who had lied on the phone preferred mouthwash over the soap, and those who had lied in email preferred soap to mouthwash. When I describe priming studies to audience, the reaction is often disbelief. This is not a surprise. System 2 believes that it is in charge and that it knows the reason for its choices. Questions are probably cropping up in your mind as well. How is it possible for such trivial manipulations of your mind as well? Uh, sorry, how is it possible for such trivial manipulations of the context to have such large effects? Do these experiments demonstrate that we are completely at the mercy of whatever primes the environment provides at any moment? Of course not. The effects of the primes are robust, but not necessarily large. Among a hundred voters, only a few whose initial preferences were uncertain will vote differently about a school issue in their press in their precinct. I don't think I'm saying that precinct. Precinct in precinct is located in a in a school rather than a church, but a few percent could tip an election. The idea you should focus on, however, is that this is that disbelief is not an option. The results are not made up, nor are they statistical flukes. You have no choice but to accept that. The major conclusion of these studies are true. More important, you must accept that they are true about you. If you had been exposed to a screensaver of floating dollar bills, you too would likely have picked up a few pencils to help a clumsy stranger. You do not believe that these results apply to you because they correspond to nothing in your subjective experience, but your subjective experience consists largely of the story that your system too tells itself about what is going on. Priming phenomena arise in system one and you have no conscious access to them. I conclude with a perfect demonstration of a priming effect which was conducted in an office kitchen at a British university. For many years, members of the office had paid for the tea or coffee to which they helped themselves during the day by dropping money into an honesty box. A list of suggested prices was posted. One day, a banner poster was displayed just above the price list with no warning or explanation. For a period of 10 weeks, a new image was presented each week, either flowers or eyes that appeared to be looking directly at the observer. No one commented on the new decorations, but the contributions to the honesty box changed, changed significantly. The posters and the amounts that people put in the cash box relative to the amount they consumed are shown in figure four. Now I'm looking at the thing. So they deserve a close look. Image, eyes, flowers. So if you look, see if that. If that, yeah. So it says no one commented on the new decorations, but the contributions to the honesty box changed significantly. The post and the amounts that people put in the cash box relative to the amount they consumed are shown in figure four. So the flowers, were, so they consumed more than they actually put in the cash box. Interesting. On the first week of the experiment, which you can see at the bottom of the figure, two wide open eyes dead coffee or tea drinkers whose average contribution was 70 pence per liter of milk. On week two, the poster shows flowers and average contribution drops to about 15 pence. 
The trend continues. On average, the use of the kitchen contributed almost three times as much in eye weeks as they did in, in flower weeks. Evidently, a purely symbolic reminder of being washed prodded people into improved behavior. As we expect at this point, the effect occurs without any awareness. Do you know? Do you now believe that you would also fall into the same pattern? Some years ago, the psychologist Timothy Wilson wrote a book with the evocative title Strangers to Ourselves. You have now been introduced to that stranger in you, which may be in control of much of what you do, although you rarely have a glimpse of it. System 1 provides the impressions that often turn into your beliefs and is the source of the impulses that often become your choices and your actions. It offers a tactic interpretation of what happens to you and around you, linking the present with the recent past with expectations about the near future. It contains the model of the world that instantly evaluates events as a normal or surprising. It is the source of your rapid and often precise of intuitive judgments, and it, does not most, and it does most of this without your conscious awareness of its activity. System one is also, as, we'll, as we will see in the following chapters, the origin of many of the systematic errors in your intuitions. Speaking of priming, the sight of all these people in uniforms does not prime creativity. The world makes much less sense than you think. The coherence comes mostly from the way your mind works. They were primed to find flaws, and this is exactly what they found. His system one constructed a story, and his system two believed it. It happened to all of us. I made myself smile, and I'm actually feeling better. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's chapter four. Hope you enjoyed it. Likes like and subscribe comments about what your thoughts are i also want to say that it's an interesting thing here that they're talking about because you know you don't the question is do you have control of who you are and i think the answer is a little bit but not that much you know because you, you your ideas of who you are are built in from the life you live through the entire sea of which environment you've been in your whole life and it does make sense because <clears throat> You make stupid choices every day and especially comfortable choices and repetitive choices because that's how your mind works. But yeah, anyway, yeah, like I said, like and subscribe. Hope you enjoy the video. I'm going on chapter five in the next video. See you guys.